Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So there are three works of Bhaskaracharya, Leelavati, Bijaganita and Siddhanta Shiromani. All the three are also called put together and thought of as a single work also. Then he wrote the Vasana commentary on Leelavati, on Bijaganita, on Siddhanta Shiromani also. The Vasana on Lilavati and Vijaganita mainly deal with explaining the examples given in these works, whereas the Vasana on Siddhanta Shiromani discusses upapattis, explanations, proofs and things like that. Then uh, Bhaskaracharya also wrote uh, Karana Kutuhala and also he wrote a commentary on Lalla's uh, Shishyadi Vridha Tantra. Anyway, we will discuss the Bijaganita, Ravyakta Ganita, mainly Bhaskara's treatise. We will quickly uh, look at the development of uh, algebra, then uh, look at some things like how they understood negative quantities, how algebraic notation developed. We will mainly talk about in both this lecture and the next lecture about the Varga Prakriti equation and particularly the so called Chakravala method of solution of the Varga Prakriti equation. In this talk, I will also tell you something about some other equations, interesting equations that Bhaskara solved in his Bijaganita book. So, the notion of uh, Yavat Tavat unknown quantity goes back to Shulva Sutras. You all saw that uh, Katyayana Shulva Sutra gives you how to construct another square which is n times a given square, and that n was explained. Uh, expressed in terms of Yavat. The term Gulika occurs in Aryabhatiya for the unknown and Aryabhata of course gave the Kutaka method of solving the linear indeterminate equations. Bhaskara uses the idea of Yavat Tavat in his commentary. Brahma Gupta of course gives a detailed exposition of algebra in the Kutaka Adhyaya of Brahma's Siddhanta in 628 AD. A discussion of algebra appears in the work of Sripati, which was written in 1050. But the most important work on algebra that is Indian algebra that is available to us today is the Bijaganita of Bhaskaracharya 2. As you all know, he wrote this work when he was 34 years around 1150 and he says he has only compiled and abridged from well known treatises of Sridhara and Padmanabha on Bijaganita, both of which are not available to us. Bijaganita is also a somewhat small work, 100 verses giving the various sutras or rules and about 110 verses giving examples and as I said, there is Bhaskara's commentary Vasana on this. Two important commentaries on Bijaganita are one by Surya Dasa and the one by Krishna Daivagya. The commentary on of Surya Dasa has been partially edited and printed. The commentary of Krishna Daivagya is available in, in published forum in full. It discusses proofs of various results contained in Bijaganita. There is another very important work on algebra due to Narayana Pandita called Bijaganita Vatamsa, but only the first few chapters of this book are available to us now, up to Chakravala. So, quickly the contents of Bhaskara's Bijaganita, Dhanardna Shadvida, the six operations with positive and negative numbers. Kashadvida, six operations with 0, Avyakta Shadvida, six operations with unknown quantities, arithmetic of certs, Karani Shadvida, linear, linear indeterminate equations Kutaka, second order indeterminate equation Varga Prakriti, the cyclic method for solving them Chakravala. Then these portions Bhaskara calls them Bijopayogi, they are useful for algebraic analysis of other equations and the main portion of Bijaganita actually deals with Ekavarana Samikarana equations in single unknown, Madhyama Harana, elimination of the middle term in a quadratic equation 
equations with several unknowns, aneka varana samikarana, then elimination of middle term in equations with several unknowns and finally, the Bhavita form of equation, which this classification is standard, it has come down from Brahma Gupta as you can see. So, in the first verse of uh, Bija Ganita, Bhaskara does an invocation to Avyakta, Avyakta Ganita and it is a very interesting beautiful verse, which has been given three different meanings, where the Avyakta can be either thought of as the prakriti or primordial nature as understood in the Sankhya philosophy, it can be thought of as, as Krishna Daiva his commentary says, Avyaktam Vande, Isham Vande, Ganitam Chavande. So, there are three invocations made in a single verse, Avyaktam Pradhanam, Sankhya Shastre, Jagat Karanateya Prasiddham, it is thought of in the Sankhya school of philosophy as the primordial nature, Isham Sachidananda Rupam Vedanta Vedyam, the second meaning you think of it as the Parabrahma as known in Vedanta and in the third meaning Avyaktam is Avyakta Ganita or the mathematics done with unmanifest quantities or algebra. So, the three meanings are here, you can read it at your leisure. The idea of negative quantities uh, were posed a great problem in history of mathematics in many cultures, but in India from the beginning it had a very nice and good interpretation, there was no fear of the negative numbers or no uncertainty or confusion about the way they have to be used. Now, while commenting on the verse of Bija Ganita that a negative number when you subtract becomes positive, Krishna Daivagya tried to explain what is a negative number. So, he says the negativity can be understood in three different ways depending on the physical situation and each of them what negativity means he tries to explain. So, Rinatva miha tridha tavadasti deshataha kalataha vastu tashchit. So, the negativity can be of three kinds, one in spatial direction, one in temporality and one in the terms of objects and he goes on explaining what it is. So, in spatial direction, if one direction is thought of to be positive, the opposite direction is to be thought of to be negative, a very clear physical explanation of it. Similarly, temporally, if one way of evolution of time is to be thought of as positive, the other way can be thought of to be negative. Similarly, if I possess a set of objects and then it can be called my wealth and if I part some of it to you, then the, it becomes negative for me and positive for you. So, this dhana and rina, which arose normally in commercial mathematics. So, negativity has all these different ways of understanding and what Krishna Devagya is doing is uh, trying to prove this result that minus of minus is plus by using a special way of understanding negativity. Then he also draws attention to the beautiful words of Bhaskaracharya and Gilavati, which was explained in the morning by Professor Sri Ram. This is to calculation of the perpendicular intercepts in a triangle where the base, the perpendicular falls outside the base. Dasha sapta dasha pramau bhujau tribuje yatra nava pramamahi abadhe vada lambakam tatha ganitam ganiti kashu tatra me. So, Bhaskara in his, this is Bhaskara's vasana commentary, we will come back to that in a moment. The triangle that is being thought of is 9 is the base, 17 and 10 are the sides and this is the perpendicular and normally when you calculate the base intercepts, you think of a, a triangle with an acute angle at the top and in all the three. So, the usual calculation has been explained to you several times, C 1 and C 2 have to be calculated, B squared minus A squared is C 2 squared minus C 1 squared and C 2 minus C 1 therefore, is B squared minus C A squared by C 1 plus C 2 which is C itself. And so, you have two equations, one for C 2 minus C 1, one for C 1, C 2 plus C 1 and by the method of Sankramana, which was explained in the morning, you find C 1 and C 2. But you plug in 17 and 10 and 9, immediately you will find that the C 2 minus C 1 21 is larger than the base 9 and therefore, you will see one of the intercepts C 1 
will have to become negative. So, this is what Bhaskara is explaining here. Atra Tribuja Bhujayor Yoga Ityadina Labdham 21. That is by using the formula for the Abadhas, you will get that C2 minus C1 is 21. Anena Bhuhu Una Nasyat, we cannot subtract 9, uh, uh, 21 from 9. Tasmat Eva Bhuhu Apanita Sheshardham Rinagata Abadha Digvaiparityena Ityatha. Therefore, we subtract 9 from 21 and we get the, an intercept which is Rinagata, which is negative which means it goes in the opposite direction. It is explaining the entire concept of negative number in this beautiful example to which Krishna Devagya is drawing attention in his uh, commentary here. Dasha sapta dasha pramau bhujau ityad asmin uta ityadi asmin udaharane yata uktam acharya hi lilavatyam. So, this is a very beautiful and important way of understanding negative numbers. Now, the development of algebraic notation, this has also been talked about. One of the best indicators for it, of course, is in the Bhakshali manuscript. In the Aryabhatiya Bhashya of Bhaskara, we find references to algebraic notation. Bhaskara very clearly writes down the notation. Atra in algebra, rupanam avyaktanam cha adhyaksharani upalakshanartham lekhyani. So, the first letter of the unknowns have to be written for denoting these objects. Tatha yani unagathani tani urdhva bindu nicha. So, you have to put a dot above the negative quantity. So, we saw that Bhaskara was putting a dot here. Abadhe 6 with a dot there minus 6 that was the base intercept. In. So, here in algebra the initial letters of the unknown quantity should be written as their signs. So, the symbols used are yavat tavat. So, you use ya for that. Kalaka black color, ka for that, nilaka ni for that, pita p for that. Product of two unknowns will be written with a bha following them, bhavita the product. The square of some quantity will be written by writing a va following that quantity standing for varga. If it is cube, write a gha. So, you can see that the equation x to the power 4 minus 2 x square minus 400 x is equal to 9999, nine, nine, an equation which Bhaskara solved, a very famous by quadratic equation that Bhaskara solved in his uh, Bija Ganita. Uh, it is to be written in symbols like this. The two sides of the equations are written one below each other. Instead of writing on the left and the right, they are written one below each other. Yava va 1, Yava 2 dot, ya 400 dot, Ru 0, that is constant term 0, Yava va 0, Yava 0, Ya 0, Ru 9999 nine, nine, stands for this this is the kind of algebraic notation. This is clearly there in the commentary, Vasana Bhashya of Bhaskara. So, this kind of notation is standard and was very well established by 1150 in Indian algebra. Ru is the constant term. So, 99999 nine, 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 nine is Ru 9999. Nine, nine, nine. So, it is not an unknown, it is a constant. Rupa, the one that is visible to you straight away as a number. Ya is something that is not known, it is avyakta, this is vyakta. Incidentally, there is a very interesting discussion on the second verse of Bhaskara called, where he says vyaktam avyakta bijam, that the, the vyakta ganita is avyakta bija. So, this can be interpreted in two ways. Vyakta is the bija of avyakta. It can also be interpreted as vyakta is that for which avyakta is the bija. Avyaktam bijam yasyatat. So, both can be used and Krishna Daivigya tries to explain it that in order to understand algebra, you should first know how to calculate with manifest quantities, with numbers, etcetera. But in order to prove the rules given in arithmetic, like the rule for square root or the rule for cube root, you take recourse to algebraic methods. So, in that sense algebra is the bija of arithmetic. Okay. Now, we the rest of the lecture is on the Varga Prakriti equation. What is the equation? We have to solve this quadratic indeterminate equation, where k is a given integer, d is a given non-negative non-square integer. So, d can be 2, 3, not 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
not 9. So, but you have to solve for x and y in integers. So, such class of equations where you want to solve for the equation in integers are called indeterminate equations. Uh, they are wrongly called Diophantine equations. Uh, Diophantus did consider equations, but the solutions he looked for were rational. So, he looked for equations, solutions of equation like say an equation like this 7 x plus 3 y is equal to 5. Now, if I demand that you solve for x and y in integers, this becomes a Kuttaka problem. But if I do not demand anything, then given any x, you can always find a y. And Diophantus did something in intermediate between that. He said we want to solve for x and y in rational numbers. So, given any rational number for x, we will obviously obtain a rational number for y. So, he did not discuss indeterminate equations at all. In European tradition, it was Fermat who started the detailed study of indeterminate equation. Before that, Bache tried to solve equations like this. We will come to that later. So, in this Varga Prakriti equation, x is called Jeshthamula, y is called Kanishthamula, d is the Prakriti, k is the Kshepa. We saw this equation also that if x squared minus dy squared is equal to 1, then x by y is a good approximation to root d. The larger the y here, the better will be the approximation. And the Shulva Sutra approximation is a particular case of Varga solution of a Varga Prakriti equation with the d is equal to 2. So, we can start with 3 squared minus 2 into 2 squared is equal to 1, next is 70 squared minus 2 into 12 squared is equal to 1, next is 577 squared minus 2 into 408 squared is equal to 1. These are the 3 steps, we will see that each of them come from the previous via Bhavana. So, Brahma Gupta not only discussed this equation, he gave this Bhavana which has been done in the morning. What is the Bhavana principle? If you have a solution for the Varga Prakriti equation for a given d with a shape of k 1, if you have the solution for the Varga Prakriti equation for the same d with some other shape of k 2, then you can construct a solution for the same Varga Prakriti equation with d with shape of k 1 k 2. So, given the equation with a k 1, a solution, given an equation with k 2, another solution, you can construct a solution for k 1, k 2 that can just be done by taking the product of these two equations that will immediately become that. It is just an algebraic identity. Given this and this, it immediately follows algebraically that this is true. But this was a great discovery because it enabled Brahmagupta to handle this equation. So, first thing he did, he said you can construct always rational solutions for the. So, you can start with an x and a y get whatever k you want and then do this, you will get a rational solution. But more importantly, if I, if k 1 is equal to 1 and k 2 is equal to 1, then k 1, k 2 is equal to 1. Therefore, if I know a solution x y with k is equal to 1, then I know another solution x squared plus dy squared and 2 x y, which is also valid for k is equal to 1. So, if this equation can be solved, to get one solution, then you can obtain another, then you can obtain another, therefore, it has infinite number of solutions. So, how these are obtained by Bhavana, you can straight away see. So, we are solving x squared minus 2 y squared is equal to 1. So, x is equal to 3, y is equal to 2 is one solution, we can straight away see from inspection. So, we do Bhavana on this. So, x squared plus dy squared will give me 3 squared plus 2 into 2 squared. So, this is 17, 2 x y will give me 2 into 3 into 2 is equal to 12 and you will obtain the other solution. 17 squared is 289, 12 squared into 2 is 288 and again I will do it 17 squared plus 2 into 12 squared. This you will see is 577 and 2 into 17 into 12, it is 408. So, you will immediately get the Shulva Sutra approximation for root 2. So, you can say root 2 is approximately equal to 3 by 2 is 1, next is 17 by 12, better one is 577 by 408 and this is. So, this is the power of Bhavana. 
you know one solution and Brahmagupta as was pointed out in this lecture on Brahmasputta Siddhanta solved two examples x squared minus dy squared is equal to 1 for d is equal to 92 and x squared minus dy squared is equal to 1 for d is equal to 83 by mere inspection and application of bhavana. So, he just started with so 92 look at the nearest square 10, 10 squared minus 92 into 1 squared is 8. Then just by doing bhavana of it with itself and manipulating both the sides he finally lands up with the solution x is equal to 1151 y is equal to 120 which is not at all easy to guess unless you knew the bhavana method. So, we now move on to the historic Chakramala method which was a systematic method algorithm for solving the equation x squared minus dy squared is equal to 1 for any d which is not a square. Till 30, 40 years ago it was thought that this Chakravala method occurred in the Bijaganita of Bhaskara. So, people thought that Bhaskara Charya 2 himself was the originator of that. Later on in 1957 Professor K. Shukla discovered verses about Chakravala in a commentary of Udaya Divakara. Udaya Divakara is writing a commentary Sundari on the Lagu Bhaskari of Bhaskara Acharya 1. So, in that commentary he is citing Acharya Jayadeva and quoting the Chakravala method. So, Chakravala method at least goes back to Acharya Jayadeva who must have lived some time prior to 1073. Now, this set of verses of Acharya Jayadeva roughly translate to what I am writing now. So, what is our procedure? At some stage you have a solution x i squared minus d y i squared is equal to k i. Suppose you want to solve x squared minus d y squared is equal to 1 for a given d. Suppose you have reached this point what should you do? Jayadeva says you calculate a quantity p i plus 1 by these two conditions they are somewhat complex, but they will keep repeating themselves repeatedly. So, first thing you already know x i as an integer y i as an integer k i as an integer. So, here x i is known k i is known y i is known solve this Kutaka equation these are known integers x i k i and y i. So, solve this Kutaka equation for the unknowns p i plus 1 and y i plus 1. And as you know in the Kutaka problem solution is not unique uh, given one solution there can be infinite number of others. You have to choose amongst the p i plus 1 which satisfy this Kutaka equation that p i plus 1 such that p i plus 1 square minus d divided by k i has the least value. Having done that p i plus 1 is found y i plus 1 is found then you find k i plus 1 and x i plus 1 by the following algebraic relations. Then you have found a new set of quantities x i plus 1 y i plus 1 such that x i plus 1 squared minus d y i plus 1 squared is k i plus 1. So, we have obtained from starting from this step x i squared minus d y i squared is equal to k i to a new step x i plus 1 squared minus d y i plus 1 squared minus k i plus 1. Of course, this is not the solution, but Jayadeva tells you that do not worry you keep going on if you keep going on you will either obtain at some stage k i plus 1 is equal to 1 itself then you have solved the problem or you may hit upon minus 1 plus or minus 2 or plus or minus 4 in which case Brahmagupta has told you how to solve the problem by using bhavana. This was explained to you in the morning I did not spend time on that this is the Brahmagupta has told you that if you know how to solve this equation for minus 1 plus minus 2 and plus minus 4 then a simple algebraic formula for the solution for k is equal to 1 can be obtained. So, for instance, if you know x 1 squared minus d y 1 squared is equal to minus 1, 
then you can say x 1 square plus d y 1 square and 2 x 1 y 1 will solve this equation. If you know that x 1 square minus d y 1 square is equal to plus 2, then you can immediately see that this will solve this equation. So, like that if you know it for plus 4 and minus 4 also, Brahma Gupta has given you the formulae for obtaining the solution. So, once you reach k is equal to plus minus 2 or plus minus 4 or minus 1, you do not need to follow this complex procedure, you do not need to do this, you can use Brahma Gupta's Bhavana to solve. So, this was the Chakravada process according to Jayadeva. Unfortunately, these verses do not tell us how exactly are these conditions to be implemented. We will see in a minute what is the problem about these conditions if they are not very clearly stated and there are no examples of Jayadeva are also available. Now, we will come to Bhaskara's statement of Chakravada and it is a very simple statement in about 4 verses and he is saying Chakravada midam jaguhu. People call this method as the Chakravada method which in fact made many people suspect that Bhaskara is talking of a method that was already well known at his time. And uh, the main difference between this condition and the condition Bhaskara is giving is that Bhaskara is making a very specific condition, choose your p i plus 1 such that mod p i plus 1 squared minus d has the least value. So, he has made it a very clear condition and where does it appear here? Kritva kalpyo gunas tatra that is that p i plus 1 tatha prakritita chute guna varge guna is the y i plus 1 the p i plus 1 there guna varge p i plus 1 square prakritita chute subtracted from d athava prakrityone or p i plus d subtracted from p i plus 1 square alpam sheshakam yatha. So, either way the d minus p i plus 1 square or p i plus 1 square minus d whenever either of them becomes the least you choose that. So, the condition of Bhaskara is very clearly this. So, now let us write down the algorithm in final form. A further small simplification was done in 1930 by Krishna Swami when he analyzed Bhaskara's Chakravada algorithm and he showed that this complex Kuttaka condition for determining p i plus 1 can be replaced by a much simpler condition that p i plus p i plus 1 is divisible by k i. So, finally, the algorithm that we are going to use and work out one or two examples is the following. We want to solve x squared minus d y squared is equal to 1, some initial condition let us start with x naught is equal to 1, y naught is equal to 0, k naught is equal to 1, p naught is equal to 0. At any step in the algorithm, you have reached a point x i minus d y i square is k i. Find the next p i plus 1 by solving by using these two conditions. Choose p i plus 1 such that p i plus p i plus 1 is divisible by k i and modulus of p i plus 1 square minus d is minimum. Then you are able to obtain your k i plus 1, y i plus 1, x i plus 1 such that you reach x i plus 1 square minus d y i plus 1 square is k i plus 1 iterate this till either you obtain 1 or minus 1 or plus minus 2 or plus minus 4 in the latter case do bhavana. There are two other quantities which we will also use which will be interesting later p i plus p i plus 1 by mod k i we will call it as a i and the sign whether p i squared is greater than d or lesser than d we will denote it by writing an epsilon i as 1 or minus 1 and this a i and epsilon i we will simplify the calculation of the y i plus 1 and x i plus 1 in terms of y i and x i. You can straight away do the calculation without divisions and all that. So, Bhaskara's first example was 61 and 67, ka sapta shishti gunita, which number squared multiplied by 67 ka kriti which square sapta shishti gunita multiplied by 67 or another example ka chaika shishti nihata 
So, which square multiplied by 61, just a case arupa 1 added to it, Chian Moolada, square root of that will be an integer. Please tell us if you really know the Kriti Prakriti Nitantam Vat Chetasi Pravada. If you really know how to calculate the Varga Prakriti equation, tell us. So, now Bhaskara's own calculation goes like this. I have just given it to tell you, you can compare this with the table that I am going to write down later to see that how Bhaskara is arguing in his Vasana Bhashya for solution. It is not the entire solution, a portion of the solution I have just told you till you reach the 39 and 5. Okay. So, as I said the first step involved was that you take x naught is equal to 1, y naught is equal to 0, p naught is equal to 0, k naught is equal to 1. So, this is just the statement that 1 square minus b square into 0 square is equal to 1. Now, from this p naught I have to go to next p. So, what are my two conditions? So, those two conditions I will write them on the board p i plus 1 plus p i is divisible by k i. So, this is our condition 1, condition 2 p i plus 1 squared minus d is minimum. So, keep this in mind when we understand this table. So, my p 1 should be such that p naught plus p 1 is divisible by 1. No, every integer is alright, 0 plus 7, 0 plus 8, 0 plus 9 are all divisible by 1. Square of p 1 squared should be closest to 61. So, amongst all the squares, it is 8 square which is closest to 61. So, immediately we will choose our p 1 to be 8. Once p 1 has been chosen to be 8, what do you need to do? You have to calculate your k 1. So, p 1 we have already obtained to be 8. So, your k 1 is equal to p 1 square minus 61. We are doing the 61 example, right? By k naught. k naught is already 1 and so we will get this term. We have written it in the right side. So, this is equal to 3. So, 8 and 3 have come. You really do not need to calculate all this at this stage. You can keep on going till you find your k to be 1. You can fill up all these columns later, but still for the sake of convenience, let us remember what x 1 is, what y 1 is. To do that, we need to go back to this formula x 1 is a 1 into x naught, x 2 is a 1 into x 1 plus epsilon 1 into x naught. Similarly, y 2 is a 1 into y 1 plus epsilon 1 into y naught. So, you have to just apply that and remember your a 1 is p naught plus p 1 divided by k 0 plus 8 divided by k that is 8 here. In this, k can take positive and negative values, a can take positive and negative values, p always takes positive values, epsilon can take positive negative values, x and y always take positive values. <coughs> so, what is the next step? You have already obtained your p 1 to be and so you have arrived at a stage which is very trivial, 8 square minus 61 into 1 square is equal to 3, which is something which could have written just without doing all this. Now, what is the next step? p 1 plus p 2 is divisible by 3. So, what are the possibilities? 8 plus 4 is divisible by 3, 8 plus 7 is divisible by 3, 8 plus 10 is divisible by 3. Of this 4, 7 and 10, of these 3, the square of which is closest to 61. 10 squared is 100, it is 39 away. 7 squared is 49, it is 12 away. 4 squared is 16, it is 35 away, uh, 45 away. So, 7 is the, so p 2 is 7. Once p 2 is 7, so k 2 is equal to p 2 square minus 61 by 
k 1 that is equal to 7 square minus 61 by 3 therefore, you get minus 4. And you can go ahead and calculate your x 1, x 2 and y 2. Before that, what is your a 2? a 2 is 8 plus 7 divided by 3 that is 5. And your epsilon is minus 1 because here this d squared is larger than 61. And so, at the end of the step 2, you are obtaining 39 square minus 61 into 5 square is equal to minus 4. Of course, you should, in the normal course you have to go on, uh, but uh, Chakravala meaning the Bhaskara and the Jayadeva have told us, if you obtain plus minus 2 plus minus 4, use Bhavana principle. So, this is the formula in case you have minus 1. So, let us go back and see that formula. In case k is equal to minus 4, in case x 1 squared minus d y 1 squared is minus 4, then construct your x by x 1 squared plus 2 into half of x 1 squared plus 1 into x 1 squared plus 3 minus 1, construct your y this way that will be solution of x squared minus d y squared is equal to 1. So, let us see that the same thing that we do here 39 squared plus 2 half into 39 squared plus 1 into 39 squared plus 3 minus 1 and this is your x and this is your y and do not be surprised for at such a big number this is the smallest value of x and smallest value of y such that this equation is satisfied. So, 1 is of the order of trillion 2 is of the order of uh, uh, 100, uh, 226 million y is of the order. If you had not stopped at this minus 4, if you had continued the Chakravala, you would have obtained the solution, you would have obtained your k is equal to 1 at the 14th step. In between you would have gone through various other k values. So, 8 squared minus 61 into 1 squared is minus 3. 39 squared minus 61 to 5 squared is minus 4, 164 squared minus 61 into 21 squared is minus 5. Like that it will go, you would have reached the minus 1 point also and you can see a certain symmetry in this p and k, that is the thing that it is moving in a cycle, that is the chakravala about it, that there is a, you can see a very nice symmetry both in the k and in the p and that is what is the chakravala about it. Let us do the second example of Bhaskara quickly, x squared minus 67 y squared is equal to 1. Again we start with x naught is equal to 1, y naught is equal to 1, p naught is equal to 0, k naught is equal to 1. We have to find p 1, p naught plus p 1 is divisible by 1, all integers are admissible. Of them again 8 is what is closest to 67, 8 squared is to be taken, but 8 squared minus 67 by 1 is now minus 3, 8 squared minus 61 by 1 was plus 3, 8 squared minus 67 by 1 is minus 3. So, the first step you will have k is minus 3. Now, again to this 8, again 8 plus, so this step is also very similar to the 61 example, 8 plus 4, 8 plus 7, 8 plus 10 are all divisible by 3, of them 7 squared is closest, only now 7 squared minus 67 by minus 3 is equal to 6. 7 squared minus 67 is minus 18 divided by minus 3 is 6. And at this stage you are having 41 squared minus 67 into 5 squared is equal to 6. Now, next step 7 plus the next quantity should be divisible by 6. So, 7 plus 5, 7 plus 11, 7 plus 17 are the possibilities of them 5 squared is what is closest to 67. So, you choose 5, then 5 squared minus 67 divided by 6 will be the next k that is minus 7. And at this stage you have 90 squared minus 67 into 11 squared is minus 7. Now, again 5 plus p 4 is divisible by 7, 2 is possible, 9 is possible, 16 is possible. Between 2, 9 and 16, it is 9 squared which is closest to 67, 2 squared is 4, 
it is 63 away, 9 squared is 81, it is 14 away, 16 squared is 256, it is 189 away. Therefore, 9 is what is closest, so you choose 9. Once you choose 9, 9 squared minus 67 by minus 7, it will turn out to be minus 2. You have still not obtained k is equal to 1, but you have obtained one of these four quantities plus minus 2 plus minus 4. Now, we can do bhavana and we can do bhavana and we get 221 square minus 67 into 27 square minus 2. From that, we get 48842 square minus 67 into 5967 square. So, this is the final solution. Again, if you do not stop at minus 2, you go on doing chakravala, you will obtain the one value in the end. And so, this has taken you 8 steps but minus 2 occurred at the fourth step itself and so you could go on from there. <coughs> I will not speak more about Chakravala in this talk, I will speak more about Chakravala in the next talk. I will speak about other things also done by Bhaskara in the Bijaganita work. So, one is solution of x squared minus dy squared is equal to minus 1. Obviously, this equation is not soluble for all non-square integers d. In fact, if it is soluble in all those cases where this minus 1 will appear in the sequence that you do. For instance, in the case of 61, you have a minus 1 appearing and in fact, you have a solution for x squared minus 61 y square is equal to minus 1 and that solution is precisely this 29718 and 3805. So, Bhaskara just uh, says this problem cannot be solved unless d is a sum of 2 squares. Uh, so, 61 is a sum of 2 squares, what 2 squares? i square and 6 square. So, now Bhaskara gives a method for calculating rational solutions for this equation when d is sum of 2 squares. If d is of the form of m square plus n square, Bhaskara gives you these two values which are rational solutions, not integral solutions. And he takes this example x squared minus 13 y squared is equal to minus 1, we can take this example and do bhavana on it and see whether we can obtain the solution. So, 13 can be thought of as 3 squared plus 2 squared. So, 3 by 2 and 1 by 2. Three by two and one by two will be a solution. So, what is this? This is nine by four minus thirteen by four. Ah, this is indeed correct. Okay, but there was another example where Bhaskara did not come up. In the previous case, he did come up with the integral solution. That eighteen squared. minus 13 into 5 square is equal to 18 and 5, right? Ah, this is minus 1, this is 18 square is 344 minus 13 into 25. So, this is no, 18 square is 324, this is 325, therefore, it is equal to minus 1. In the next example, Bhaskara is merely giving the rational solution for the case x squared minus 8 y squared is equal to minus 1. He is just giving the solution x is equal to 1, y is equal to half. But here our Krishna Daivagya tries to say that by doing bhavana of this solution, you can obtain integral solutions, but that is indeed not true. You cannot convince yourselves by a simple argument that x squared minus 8y squared is equal to has no integral solutions. One simple way of seeing it is, think of x and y as uh, quantities which are of the type 4m plus 1, 4m plus 2, 4m plus 3 and then see that in none of these three cases, you have a solution for an equation like that. So, here is one sort of an error 
which was pointed out in a recent thesis by Sita Sundar Ramanan, Krishna Daivagyas comment. <coughs> Bhaskara has now used this Chakravala in certain other examples. These are not very complicated examples, these are simple examples. So, I will just give the English translation of his uh, Vasana. I am giving this Vasana argument just to show you the way they were arguing in the commentary on the solution. So, one example he is trying to tell us is try and solve 6 x square plus 2 x is equal to y square. So, what does Bhaskara do? Of course, as it is looking, it is not looking like Chakravala or any such thing. So, you have to complete some squares to make it look like Chakravala and so first is multiply both sides by 6, add 1. So, if you do that left hand side becomes 6 x plus 1 whole square and then this y square if you bring it, it becomes minus 6 y square is equal to 1. So, if you call this 6 x plus 1 as a z or something else, this is a Chakravala equation. So, now I mean if this is a Varga Prakriti equation, you solve Varga Prakriti in the usual manner, then one solution is y is equal to 2, 6 x plus 1 is equal to 5 that is. So, you are solving z square minus 6 y square is equal to 1. So, z is 5 and y is equal to 2, this one solution. z is equal to 49 and y is equal to 20 is another, this can be done by Bhavana once you know one solution. So, your z is 6 x plus 1. So, this part now you have to solve 6 x plus 1 is equal to 5, you have to solve 6 x plus 1 is equal to 49, this you can solve straight away x is equal to 8. So, you obtain integral solutions x is equal to 8. So, it is just an application, an algebraic transformation of this equation and then application of Chakravala. Another problem now he is trying to pose it in a more sort of uh, motivated way, say what is the number of terms in an arithmetic progression whose first term is 3, common difference is 2, but whose sum multiplied by 3 is equal to the sum of a different number of terms of the same arithmetic progression. Trikadi uttara shredhyam gacche kvapicha yathalam tadeva trigunam kasmin anya gacche bhaved vada, gacha is the number of terms. So, trikadi starting with 3, dvyuttara. 2 is the addition at each stage in the arithmetic sequence. So, you can immediately see if an arithmetic sequence has x terms, 3 is its first term and common difference is 2, then its sum is x square plus 2 x. Similarly, another arithmetic sequence which has y terms, 3 is the starting term and 2 is the common difference, its sum is y square plus 2 y. This you can straight away do by simple algebra. Now, 3 times this should be equal to the other, x is the number of terms in the first uh, case, y is the number of terms in the second case. I think you are all staring at it, so I have to do this. a is equal to 3, d is equal to 2, x is the number of terms. So, what is the sum? 3 plus half of x into 3 plus 3 plus x minus 1 by rather 3 plus x minus 1 into 2 right. So, this is 2 x. So, similarly y is the number of terms, y square plus 2 y is the sum of the arithmetic. So, 3 times 1 is the other. So, again now you have any quadratic equation in x and y, you have to ultimately convert it into a Varga Prakriti forum by transforming it suitably. So, the transformations are all given here, multiply both sides by 3, add 9, you get an equation like this. So, already you have converted 1 into a square, again multiply by 3 and subtract 18 you get an equation like this. Now, 
you are in the domain that you can handle t square minus 3 z square is equal to minus 18 is a Varga Prakriti kind of equation. So, start with the solution of this and obtain the solution. So, finally, I will come to the biquadratic I was talking about. <coughs> in general, an equation like this x to the power 4 p x square plus q x plus r can be solved by adding a term like this a x squared minus q x plus b, but what a to be is to be used in this equation, if you try and see you will see that you will ultimately end up with a cubic equation. Therefore, it is not easy to solve this equation. Bhaskara has given one example where he has tried to find out this a, guess this a very correctly. So, the equation Bhaskara is giving this verse is transformable into this form. Ko rashihi dvishati kshunno rashi varga yuto hataha dvabhyam teno nito rashi varga vargo ayutam bhavet ayuta is 10,000 rashi varga varga is coming x to the power 4 x squared minus 2, 200 x minus twice of this subtracted from x 4 is 10,000 minus 1. Ruponam rajatam rashi where see bija kriyam if you know algebra please answer this and this is the way Bhaskara goes about solving this. So, first Bhaskara says if I can add 400 x plus 1 to the left hand side, it will become a perfect square, but the right hand side will not become a perfect square. 400 x plus 9999 plus 1 is not a perfect square. So, in this way of proceeding, we are not reaching anywhere. So, he says, Na anya bakshasya mulam asti yevam kriya na nirvahati. Therefore, we are not able to proceed further. Ato atra svabuddhi. Therefore, the mathematician is now free to devise his own method to solve this equation. So, what is the method? Add 4x square plus 100x plus 1. So, this particular form plus, 4, plus 400x is coming from this, plus 1 is also coming, but this choosing of this 4 is very special, and this is what he chooses. If we add to left hand side and right hand side, both become perfect squares and their square roots are like this. So, left hand side becomes x square plus 1 whole square, right hand side will become 2 x plus 100 whole square. And this can be solved, this is an ordinary quadratic equation. Bhaskara is giving only the solution 11. What is the other solution? Minus 9. So, that can also be used, there is nothing. Uh, so, in the end Bhaskara is saying, ityadi buddhi matam jnayam. Therefore, there is no algorithm for solving this equation. One has to apply one's intelligence to find a suitable solution if one is able to do so. So, in fact, Krishna Swami has noted that this indeed the first solution of such a non-trivial biquadratic equation. So, the paper of Krishna Swami Iyengar was the paper which first showed that Bhaskara's cyclic method actually invariably always leads to the solution of the, the quadratic uh, indeterminate equation or the Varga Prakriti equation. He also showed that it is more optimal and different than what is called the Euler-Lagrange method. Uh, for solving what is called the Pell's equation. I will say something about that in my talk on Vijaganita tomorrow. This is Krishna Swami Iyengar's paper on the quadratic by quadratic and this is Shukla's paper on Jayadeva's verses. Thank you.